What the f so, All right, so I just picked this degenerate off the street. Paid him 10 bucks to work on my car. <laughs> no. He told me if he's gonna give me toilet paper. There you go. So you should all know by now, my buddy Oleg, the guy I sold the GS300 to. How's my hair? How's my hair? It's looking beautiful. wonderful. It's yep, beautiful. of course. So he's being a comedian today. Uh, so Oleg and I have been playing around with this some more after reading your comments on the video I uploaded today. Uh, the first thing we did, I'll let Oleg explain to you, but we actually tested. Go ahead, Oleg. Um, so we check the voltage, obviously check the voltage um, on these connectors going to the coils. We got between the ground and the middle, we have constant 13 volts between the ground and the outer pin connector. We get 6.57 volts, you know, so, but it's all consistent. So, and that's on all six cylinders. Yep. So all the ignition coils are getting power. If you recall me saying in the previous video, we tested all six coils. Uh, I tested them both in the sense of, you know, rotating them around and we also ohm tested them and they were good. Um, so we know that we're definitely getting spark in the sense that the coils are firing. Um, so we know there's not an electrical issue, at least with this. So the next thing we thought, a lot of your comments said, hey, it may have jumped timing. As I mentioned to you guys, this had a recent uh, belt service, you know, probably a few years ago. We pulled the covers off and the belt is in excellent condition. Uh, there's no cracking or anything like that. And um, we tried to line up the mark as best, marks as best as we could. Um, and it's very close, you know, I highly doubt it because just the distance between this mark in here and that one is very similar. So I highly doubt it jumped a tooth or so. And we have a cockroach. And either way, when I was working on my Honda, oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> you're pissing it up. All right, well, um, I messed up the timing when I was working on my Honda, but it's still, the engine worked just fine. I was able to accelerate. It was running like shit, this thing. When you give gas to it, try to accelerate, it just dies. Um, is that will probably just something to do with fuel because this thing is getting flooded with fuel. And right, as, as I mentioned in the previous video, the spark plugs are soaked in fuel, not oil, fuel. You can definitely smell the difference and the, even the viscosity. I mean, the fuel is a very thin coating versus oil. They'd be dripping, um, you know, like with heavy, thick oil on them. So I took those out, cleaned them up last time, put them back in, they were soaked again instantly. So we've definitely got an issue here where, I, well, at least at this point, we think it's a fuel issue. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go get a fuel pressure gauge, put it onto the rail, see what the pressure is. If the pressure is low, then we know we've got an issue with either the fuel pressure regulator, the injectors, the fuel Whoa. pump, uh, could be a clogged rail. Oleg's got something to say. Well, cause also, you know, the whole job of the fuel pressure regulator, it's in the keyword pressure. It's either giving not enough pressure or too much pressure, you know, it's, um, but um, yeah, like I said, we just need to take, do the uh, measurements on the fuel pressure and then, you know, see where we're standing from there. So that's where we're at, but we're not thinking there's a timing issue. That all looks good uh, from here. And uh, again, we know for sure we're getting power to the ignition coil, so we don't think there's an electrical issue either. So that fuel pressure test, yeah, there's some riced out Civic going by. Uh, that fuel pressure test will be the next key thing to listen to that piece of junk, huh? We're going to do the fuel pressure test. We're gonna see what the pressure is. Then from there, we'll know where to go. Uh, that's the next thing. All right, so you saw earlier in the video, Oleg and I last night, messing around with this thing a bit. We tested the fuel pressure. I don't think I put that in the video. We did several fuel pressure tests. Uh, at the pump, at least, we tested the fuel pressure right after the fuel pump, and it's right in the 50s where it should be, 50 PSI. So we know the pump is good. Based on all the other diagnosing we've done, I think it's ended up being a fuel injector issue. So I picked up six fuel injectors from the junkyard today. These are out of the same run and drive pilot that I pulled the throttle body from. And I was able to return that, so I uh, got my money back on that. No issue, didn't need it. That's the beauty of buying parts from the junkyard. A, they're cheaper, and 
B, their OEM, most of the time versus buying Chinese stuff to save a buck. Because if I had bought OEM six injectors, uh, I, I can only imagine what that would have cost. These were like six bucks each. And uh, I need to clean them up, obviously. But they came out of a run and dry vehicle. When I pulled off the fuel rail, there's plenty of fuel that came out. So uh, that vehicle, having been in an accident, you know it was driving down the road. At least some of these injectors had to be working for that vehicle to be driving down the road and to get into a collision. And to get to the injectors and the fuel rail, I have to pull off the intake plenum. So we start by taking off the EGR cover here which I cleaned that before, like I said, but we're gonna take that off and there's several more 12 millimeter bolts I have to take out to pull off the intake and move it aside. I'm gonna also have to remove the throttle body again. Four 12 millimeter bolts, get that out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, I'm hoping when I pull these injectors out, I see a clear issue because at that point, I think we'll finally figure it out what the hell the problem is. All right, so I have the intake plenum off. It's pretty nasty down there. I've already got the six injectors unplugged to get them out. So I got these two, I think they're eight millimeter bolts on each side. Lift the rail right out and uh, swap the injectors, throw all that back on and cross my fingers at this point. All right, so pardon the pressure washer next door. I have thrown in the three front injectors. I'm not that optimistic this is the problem. Since the front rail is real easy to do, I changed those three injectors. Remember, these two cylinders back here are firing. It was just the one in the middle. So if this works, I won't even be upset to tear all this off again and uh, put that last injector in. Uh, out, of the out of the six that I bought, I didn't realize that two of them broke when I took them out of the parts car so fortunately for me I only need four as far as I can tell uh, so I'm just looking for any change here at all if it runs better I'll, I'm more than happy to pull all that off and throw in that other injector if it doesn't I know it wasn't a problem it really isn't that bad taking that intake off swapping those injectors so in our 15 minutes, I can have that off, swap the injectors back, the old ones, and put it back together. And I can return them, get my money back. So here we go. Yeah, not very optimistic here. No, I can already tell. Well, I don't know, can I? Oh my God. Oh! <laughs> gotta be kidding me you gotta be kidding me baby that was it it was the injectors you've got to be kidding me oh it's running so much better already it's running so much better so it still needs that one at the back but it's running so much better I couldn't even do this before oh, oh man You've got to be kidding me. It was the injectors all along. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I never would have thought. Oh, this is, this is amazing. Finally. Everybody's looking at me like I'm on drugs. I don't care. Oh, it's running so much better. It's running. Look at that. No bucking, nothing. And mind you, I still have to change the one at the back of the rail. Now I wish I did it. But... It was injectors. Look at that. Unbelievable. So the, the fuel trims explain it. Uh, there you have it. It was injectors all along. Unfreaking real. Let's see how she's running. Still a slight miss because again, I gotta change that one on the back of the rail. Unbelievable. Okay guys, let me, uh, I didn't want to waste any more time. I'm going to tear off, I'm going to take that back rail off and I'm going to change that injector and uh, then we're good to go. All right, so I had to step away from this for a little bit. I had a couple things to take care of and I'm back and I'm hoping I put everything back together correctly. It's always the worst thing when you step away from a project, you come back, you got bolts and nuts and things laying everywhere, but I'm pretty sure I did because there's nothing left up here. Uh, everything I'm pretty sure is plugged back in, tightened up. So we know it was running better with those three injectors. I put the fourth one in the middle cylinder on bank one. 
Uh, again, I would have changed all six with the Era 2 Junkyard injectors, but unfortunately they had damage. But in the meantime, if you recall, those four cylinders seemed to be the ones that were giving trouble. I would disconnect the Era 2 coils. This thing would stall out, but with those four, it wouldn't. So I replaced those four fuel injectors. So in theory, it should run even better than what I had just on the three. All right, so we definitely still have a misfire and that could be for a number of reasons. The plugs could be still soaked in fuel. I pulled a couple out, they look clean, the ones on the front banks, because I cleaned them, but uh, I didn't go all the way around. Uh, if this keeps persisting, the misfire, I'll take them out and just replace them with brand new plugs. But again, we weren't even able to do this before, so we've made a lot of progress here. Um, they're also, the cat could be clogged up. Uh, those injectors I put in, I cleaned them the best I could, but I probably should run some injector cleaner through the tank just to get them as clean as possible. But you can see, I mean, I wasn't even able to do that before to even put this in gear and really move it. So uh, even though there's still cockroaches in here, after all this diagnosing and hard work, I'm dying to take this thing for a drive. I've never been able to drive it up to this point, so I'm gonna hop in the Roach Coach. You can see, idling way stronger. Now, a lot of you were saying, oh, there's a vacuum leak, there's a vacuum leak. That's the idle air control valve. And when you first start a cold engine, that's very typical for it to be sucking that much air. There's no other vacuum leaks. The hissing you hear is definitely coming from the idle air control valve. I can hear it just now when I put my ear down to it. But this is running nice and smooth. Take a look. We weren't able to do that before. So uh, again, not perfect. Perhaps those other two injectors in the back are functioning, but not the way they should be. So unless this thing sorts itself out on its own with some injector cleaner, I'm gonna put some cat cleaner in as well and that cleans out the catalytic converter because I'm sure it's been dumping all kinds of raw fuel in there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the hood down. We'll take it out for a drive. So unbelievable. I came back here to the tailpipe and it's not even misfiring at all. There's no puff, puff, puff coming out the tailpipe. That's nice and smooth. Uh, again, there is that little slight miss when we rev it. I'm guessing it needs injector cleaner and some cat cleaner and some fresh fuel. And if not, I'll just pull the plugs out, and replace them because I know they fouled up again. Last time I put them in there, so that certainly, that's, that definitely could cause that slight miss, but much better overall all right so here we go never driven this pilot before because it never ran well enough to let me do it you can see the transmission shifting just fine i know a lot of you were concerned about that transmission as was i but you can see this one shifts just fine she goes down the road perfectly a little misfire still if i get on it real hard i'm finally able to drive this thing i'm pumped finally after all that diagnosing i came to the root of the problem it was the injectors who would have thought fuel injectors at 130,000 miles four out of six injectors bad and it could be all six so here we are driving this pilot couldn't be happier whoops so since the pilot is being well behaved, I gave it a quick detail inside, wiped everything down, vacuumed. I'm gonna change this seat cushion tomorrow. But you can see she's still running great. Uh, one of the things I did to hopefully help it stay running great is I bought some Lucas fuel injector cleaner. Again, I cleaned the fuel injectors before I put them in, but uh, I figured it doesn't hurt to run that through. And I also filled the tank up with fresh gas because who knows what was in that fuel tank. It could have even been the cause of the failing fuel injectors. But if you listen to the engine now, you can hear all those injectors ticking away, as they should be. All right, so I'm very happy to report that the pilot mechanically is finally sorted. As you recall, earlier in this video, I replaced four of the six injectors because two of the ones I removed from the junkyard car got damaged in the removal. I didn't realize that until I got home. 
So at the time, I replaced the four injectors that I knew were really bad, and I kept the two in that were still somewhat functioning. If you remember on cylinder one and cylinder five. Well, the vehicle ran great, but still had a slight misfire at times. It wasn't quite running perfect. I'd say 90 to 95% there, but I was still having some issues. So I went back to the junkyard today and I got two more injectors, made sure they weren't damaged this time. Cleaned, bench cleaned them just like I did the, la the other four. And I threw them in and I'm very, very happy to report that this thing is running the best it has yet. There is zero misfire at all in the low or high RPMs. You can see perfectly smooth. I don't want to go too hard on it because the engine's still cold, but absolutely no missing of any kind. It's running so well that I finally put the engine cover on. That's the other thing I got today. When I got this cover, I forgot to get the four bolts that hold it down. I think these covers are supposed to sit a little bit higher. There's like these plastic tubes that hold them up a little bit higher. Uh, I didn't see any cars there. It still had those. So it works just fine sitting a bit lower. I just had to trim it a little bit to accommodate the throttle cables there. But it looks a lot better than having just the intake plenum. But she's running absolutely perfect. This is the best it's ran yet. I am so happy. I don't have much left to do on this vehicle now to get it ready to sell. I ran through the car wash the other day and it came out looking really, really nice. Cleaned up the wheels, the paint, everything. Not perfect. There's a few more areas I need to get into real good by hand. I need to clean up these headlights a bit. I think I'm just going to leave the roof alone. This is a South Florida, almost 20 year old vehicle. It's to be expected. And again, this is a far from perfect pilot. We have these dents here from break-ins. The interior cleaned up real nice. I will change that seat cushion. Uh, the other thing I have to do is recharge the air, the AC. Uh, the compressor does work. You might have just heard it kick on right now, but it's not blowing cold. It's blowing not even cool. It's almost blowing room temp. So it definitely needs a recharge. So I'll take care of that. Uh, but. The good news is mechanically this thing is finally sorted and I'll keep driving it around in the meantime to continue running through the injector cleaner but the way it's running right now I think those injectors are squeaky clean. When I changed the two other ones in the back I checked the injector that I put in with the other four and it was so clean for that injector cleaner. I mean I, I bench cleaned it but there's just those tiny little areas you really can't get the thing looked brand new. So that injector cleaner is working wonders. That fresh tank of gas is working wonders. So I don't have too much left to do with this. I'm very happy that I can get this one moved down the road, get in a new home, and I can get back to focusing on the other inventory that I have. The past few days, I haven't had time to get to the junkyard, so I've just been driving this thing with the four injectors I replaced and still on the other two old ones. And again, it was drivable, but it wasn't perfect yet. And I was really hoping it'd be those last two injectors that needed to be replaced. I was hoping it wasn't going to be spark plugs or, or something else or a valve adjustment because uh, I kept getting a misfire. But again, but now this is the most smooth it's ran. We'll be enjoying its new lease on life. This car was just days away from the junkyard with 130,000 miles on it. And that would have been a real shame. So very happy. It was not an easy journey getting this thing running right, but at the end of the day, it's done. And I'm only into it for the 250 I paid, plus the whatever I've spent under $100 in parts, because everything else I returned. So you really can't go wrong. I just have to show you guys, I'm out driving her now. I mean, it's, it's not, even, I thought it was running well before when I changed the four injectors. It's running twice as well now. This thing is really dialed in. It, run, it runs just like my old pilot did. I remember the power now. No check engine lights coming on, nothing. It's running so, so well. I couldn't be happier. You can see I get on her a little bit. She just goes nice and smooth. Transmission shifts like butter. Beautiful, 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 beautiful.